Are you wondering how to avoid paying taxes on settlement money? What if I told you there are legal ways to avoid handing over a massive chunk of your settlement to the IRS? Well, stay tuned because in this video, I'll share five little known tax tips to maximize the amount you keep after your legal settlement. I'm Greg Maxwell. I'm a practicing attorney and a certified financial planner, and I help plaintiffs reduce the amount of taxes they pay on their settlements. The five tips that I'll outline today aren't sketchy tax schemes. They're completely legal strategies we regularly use with plaintiffs nationwide. But most people have never heard of these strategies. So make sure to stick around because by the end of this video, you'll understand how you can double or even triple how much of your settlement money you get to keep after paying taxes. For many of the people we work with, we help them save tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes using these strategies. So if you will be receiving a settlement anytime soon, watch until the end of the video so you can avoid paying Uncle Sam the lion's share of your settlement. So before we dive in, just please know that the information contained in this video is intended for general informational purposes and is not intended to be tax advice. Now, before we can talk about the tax tips, there's an important first question that must be answered. Do I even have to pay taxes on my legal settlement? Well, here's what you need to know. The default assumption of the IRS is that money you get from legal settlements is money you have to pay taxes on. The IRS has a code section, section 61, that says they count almost all money you get as taxable income. So this includes money from legal settlements. In other words, the IRS starts by assuming that settlements are taxable unless proven otherwise. So the main tax rule for legal settlements is called the origin of the claim rule. And this rule says that whether you have to pay taxes on your settlement depends on the reason you started the lawsuit in the first place. So essentially, whether you have to pay taxes is determined by what you are seeking recovery for in the lawsuit. So for example, if you sue your employer for lost wages and back pay, the settlement proceeds will be taxed as ordinary income, just like the wages would have been. Or if you sue a business partner for lost profits from a joint venture, your settlement for those lost profits is taxable as ordinary income. The key is matching up the settlement payment with the original claim asserted. So this origin of the claim rule means that both plaintiffs and defendants need to pay close attention to the specific claims involved in a lawsuit when evaluating the potential tax implications of the settlement. So the burden falls on the plaintiff to prove to the IRS that a legal settlement should be treated as tax exempt income if they want to avoid paying taxes on the funds they receive. So in short, if you receive money from a legal settlement and you believe you shouldn't pay taxes on it, it's your responsibility to prove to the IRS why it should be tax free. The most common types of tax free settlements are those received as compensation for personal physical injuries or physical sickness. Settlements for personal physical injuries are excluded under section 104A2 of the Internal Revenue Code, which says that gross income does not include the amount of any damages other than punitive damages received on account of personal physical injuries or physical sickness. So if you're receiving a settlement because you were physically injured, here's the great news. Your settlement is completely tax-free. Typical cases that qualify for this tax-free exclusion include car accidents, slip and fall accidents, medical malpractice, and other incidents causing cuts, bruises, broken bones, or worse. Essentially, if the origin of the claim involved some type of incident that caused personal physical injuries or physical sickness, section 104A2 allows you to exclude the settlement money from taxation. In short, if you're getting a personal physical injury settlement, you're in luck. It's tax-free. Here's the bad news. If you're receiving nearly any other type of settlement, you'll likely have to pay taxes on your settlement. The tips I cover in the rest of this video are for the people in the I have to pay taxes category. So if you're receiving a settlement that will be taxed, you need these five essential tips to avoid paying more in taxes than you have to on your settlement recovery. So tip number one, use a structured settlement annuity. One powerful way to reduce the taxes on your settlement is to use what we call a structured settlement annuity. And here's how it works. Instead of receiving the entire settlement amount in one lump sum payment, all or a portion of the settlement funds can be allocated to a purchase a structured settlement annuity. The annuity provider then makes payments to you 
the plaintiff on a set schedule. The annuity can be set up to pay out over a few years or it can be set up to pay for the rest of your life if you want. The payment schedule can be customized upfront to meet your needs and goals. And so by spreading the settlement payments out over time, you receive the funds in smaller installments each year. And so this effectively allows the settlement income to be taxed at a lower marginal tax rate compared to receiving the entire lump sum all at once in the year of settlement. So this strategic approach can save you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in taxes over the course of the payout of that annuity simply by keeping you in a lower tax bracket. So structured settlement annuities offer valuable benefits also beyond the tax savings. The annuity payments can provide a long-term income stream with a guaranteed rate of return unaffected by market volatility. A structured settlement annuity is a powerful tool to reduce taxes on legal settlements by lowering the plaintiff's marginal tax rate. So we've seen this tool work well for hundreds of plaintiffs nationwide, and it will likely help you as well. So tip number two, use the Plaintiff Recovery Trust if you can't deduct legal fees. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 created a very tricky situation for many settlement recipients. Specifically, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 changed the law so that a plaintiff's ability to deduct legal fees depends on the type of case involved. So some plaintiffs can still deduct attorney's fees above the line on their tax returns and get a full deduction for their attorney's fees. So case types that allow for an above the line deduction include unlawful discrimination cases, many types of employment cases, civil rights cases, whistleblower claims, and lawsuits brought by a business. However, plaintiffs in many other common lawsuits can no longer deduct legal fees at all. Examples of cases where there are no deductions for legal fees include defamation, legal or financial malpractice, bad faith claims, emotional distress cases, and any case with punitive damages. To understand the negative impact that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act can have on these plaintiffs, let's look at an example. There's a $10 settlement. Let's assume a 40% contingency fee. So that means that $4 goes to your attorney and the plaintiff receives $6. So you would think that the plaintiff would only pay tax on the $6 they actually receive, right? Wrong. After the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the plaintiff pays tax on the full $10 even though the plaintiff only receives $6. So these unlucky plaintiffs pay tax on the entire gross recovery, including the portion paid out in contingent fees to their attorneys. So and what's worse is that there's no offset or deduction for legal fees. So the attorneys also pay tax on the $4 they receive. So the attorney fee portion of the case is actually taxed twice. And this is an unfair outcome that we call the plaintiff double tax trap. But I do have some good news, however. A tax planning tool called the Plaintiff Recovery Trust helps plaintiffs completely avoid the plaintiff double tax trap. So by using the Plaintiff Recovery Trust, plaintiffs are able to only pay taxes on the amount they receive and not on the attorney's fees in these cases. So in other words, it allows plaintiffs to avoid having to count their attorney's legal fees as their own income. So what does this mean in practice? Well, this means that we can often double or even triple what plaintiffs get to keep after paying taxes just by using the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. So tip three, for maximum savings, use both an annuity and the Plaintiff Recovery Trust. So if one planning tool is good, two tools are even better. If your settlement is taxable and you can't deduct legal fees due to the changes in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, then we can use both the Structured Settlement Annuity with the Plaintiff Recovery Trust to get the greatest tax savings possible. Each strategy reduces taxes in a different way, and together they multiply the total tax savings. So as a reminder, the Plaintiff Recovery Trust avoids the plaintiff double tax trap, allowing the plaintiff to exclude the attorney's fees from their own taxable income. This immediately reduces the plaintiff's tax burden. However, the net amount paid to the plaintiff is still taxable. This is where a structured settlement annuity can provide further savings. By using a structured settlement annuity, the plaintiff spreads out that income over multiple years. And as I discussed in tip number one, receiving payments over time lowers the plaintiff's marginal tax rate versus taking the net settlement amount all at once. So when plaintiffs use both the Plaintiff Recovery Trust and a structured settlement annuity, they benefit from the compounded tax savings of excluding legal fees and spreading income 
over time to lower their tax bracket. So many plaintiffs triple their after-tax net recovery using this powerful combination. So if you're wondering how using these tools might help you in your specific case, don't worry. At the end of this video, I'll share how you can use our firm's settlement tax savings calculator to estimate your own tax savings using one or both of these strategies. Tip number four, maximize the medical expense exclusion. So one often overlooked way for plaintiffs to reduce their taxes is to allocate or assign a portion of the settlement in the settlement agreement to past and future medical expenses. So even when the origin of the legal claim is not based on personal physical injuries or sickness, plaintiffs may still be able to allocate some settlement proceeds to tax-free medical expenses. So this strategy can reduce taxes even in cases involving emotional distress, employment disputes, or defamation. So for example, suppose an individual sues their employer for race-based workplace discrimination, which then results in emotional distress. While emotional distress damages themselves are typically taxable, the plaintiff could gather medical expense costs they incurred related to physical symptoms like depression, insomnia, and anxiety. The plaintiff can present these medical expenses as part of settlement negotiations. And if successful, the settlement agreement could allocate a reasonable portion of the settlement, say 20%, as a non-taxable reimbursement for these eligible medical costs. So this allocation would then reduce the overall tax burden for the plaintiff because the amount allocated to the medical costs is tax-free. So similarly, in a defamation case, the victim could accumulate evidence of medical expenses for physical manifestations of emotional distress that resulted from the reputational damage they, they incurred. With proper documentation, a reasonable allocation to the settlement agreement could be made to tax-free medical expenses. So the important thing is to have proof of medical treatments for the physical problems, even if they were caused by something not physical. So if the defendant agrees, you can use some of the settlement money for medical bills without having to pay taxes on that portion. This way, even if you sued for reasons that will require you to pay taxes, you can get a portion tax-free. So again, why is this helpful? Well, allocating settlement funds to past and future medical expenses can save on taxes because the tax code states that reimbursement or payment for medical costs are tax-free and excluded from plaintiff's income. So you'll need to work with your attorney to make sure this allocation is negotiated and included in the settlement agreement with the defendant. If the allocation isn't in the settlement agreement, you won't be able to take advantage of this tax saving tip. All right, so tip number five, allocate all damages in the settlement agreement. In addition to allocating the portion of the settlement for reimbursement for medical expenses, which we covered in tip number four, allocating all of the settlement to different types of damages can result in significant tax savings. So for example, a plaintiff can allocate a part of the settlement money as tax-free if it's for personal physical injuries or sickness. So even in a job-related lawsuit, if there's enough evidence, a part of the money might be tax-free. So moreover, the plaintiff can also set aside certain amounts as reimbursement for costs that they incurred because of the defendant's wrong actions. For instance, if a plaintiff sues a financial advisor for giving bad advice on investments, some of the settlement might be seen as repayment of the lost investment principal. This part wouldn't be taxed. As we discussed in tip number four, some of the settlement could be allocated as reimbursement for medical costs, which would also be tax exempt. The settlement agreement does not need to specify exact dollar amounts for each type of damage. More general language identifying categories of damages, such as for alleged personal physical injury sustained or as compensation for medical costs incurred may suffice. The key here is to work with your attorney to allocate reasonable amounts to tax favored categories based on the circumstances of the case. While this strategy requires the defendant's consent, it is certainly worth the effort because a customized allocation of damages in the settlement agreement can result in the plaintiff paying significantly less in taxes. So paying a bunch of taxes after receiving money from a settlement can be devastating. Taxes can take a huge chunk of your recovery if you don't plan ahead. So you can use these five tips to legally reduce your tax bill and maximize the amount you keep after settlement. So I know we covered a lot of information in this video. If you are getting a legal settlement and you're worried about paying taxes, we are here to help you. We offer a free, no hassle, 15 minute phone call for plaintiffs nationwide. You can find a link to book a call in the description or comments next to this video. Or you can go to amicusplanners.com forward slash call 
to book a call. On the call, we'll chat about your case. If you have to pay taxes on your settlement, I'll gather some basic information and my firm will prepare a personalized tax savings analysis at no cost. This customized report will show you exactly how much more you could keep using the strategies we discussed today, like a structured settlement annuity or the plaintiff recovery trust or both. In the meantime, check out our proprietary no cost settlement tax calculator at settlementtaxcalculator.com. This calculator will estimate how much you have to pay in taxes. And most importantly, it shows you how much more money you can keep by using several of the strategies I mentioned in this video. But please remember, it's important to get in touch soon as all of the tax saving strategies I mentioned need to be in place before the settlement is finalized. It's painful to witness someone overpaying in taxes just because they missed out on straightforward planning with us prior to the settlement. So thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to speaking with you soon.